If you don't want to find out that your husband is trying to kill you, it's time to go away now, okay? Go right away, you little MTG. Okay, baby, go! All right, is it just us? I think it is. Now we get into the nitty gritty, okay? There's a lot of nitty and a lot of gritty to dig into. So, if you haven't noticed yet, I generally do not talk about a film right when it comes out. I think it's important to listen to different perspectives because I know how I feel about the film, but I don't know how everybody else feels about the film and what they have to say is important. So I want to see a couple people give some reviews, some initial reactions, just to see like, hmm, what did I see that they didn't see? What did they see that I didn't see? You know, it's good to get the overall perspective of things. So I was watching a Native American cinema reviewer and he provided some wonderful insight that helped fill out my perspective and help me understand why I was having the feelings that I was about the film, okay? So when I watched it the first time, I went twice because I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like the credits started rolling and I was like, what the hell did Martin Scorsese do? Because we are still watching things through the white male perspective. And that is where I had a problem with the film. I was fully expecting to go into this and have it be the perspective of the Osage people or purely Molly's perspective. I was hopeful that it would be Molly's perspective. We start off with her, we end with her, everything, every scene has Molly in it, okay? Molly, Molly, Molly. I think it would have had more impact if it were Molly's story, okay? There are only a couple choices that you can make with this film. You can tell it as like the FBI, like solving the mystery kind of thing, or you can do, which I think was the original plans. Or you could do what they did, which is, it's not a mystery at all. Um, there's not even uh, any perspective or why these uh, villains do what they do, you know. I think right now we are in a time where we need to have heroes, pure uh, unsullied heroes. And Molly was that hero because she fell in love. She followed her heart. Unfortunately, it was the wrong guy. Instead of honoring that story and also seeing the betrayal through her eyes, that moment where she goes from, I don't trust you, but I don't have any proof, to you want to kill me, you know, for my money. That is... <sighs> Despicable, isn't it? But I didn't see that here. I didn't see that turn in her perspective. This felt like it was a series of vignettes laid out of like, if this happens and then this happens and then this happens. And it was not a weaving story of a woman who fell in love with the wrong guy and discovers how evil he is. I wanted to learn more about the Osage people. Once again, in yet another movie this summer, we have a trial scene that just sits there like a lump on a log. And it doesn't really add anything to the story except Brendan Fraser. And John Lithgow. John Lithgow was there for like two seconds. It's like, why are you boys in this room? I don't get it. So, <clears throat> then I listened to a Native American uh, cinema, film cinema reviewer, and I will provide his link below to the, the, um, the video that I watched that helped me understand 
why Molly wasn't the focus. I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. He he was very smart. Martin Scorsese doesn't make movies about women. Martin Scorsese, he tells stories from the male perspective and that is what he has always done. He's like a hundred years old, so he's not going to change that anytime soon. And okay, maybe Martin Scorsese wasn't the right person to be the director of this story, you know? Like, maybe it should have been a Native American. Maybe it should have been a woman <laughs> to tell Molly's perspective. Uh, and, but then he brought up a good point of like, sadly, unfortunately, people would not flock to the theaters to see a not Martin Scorsese movie, okay? People would go to the theaters to see a Martin Scorsese movie because they know what they're going to get. He gives them, you know, the boom, boom, bang, bang. If the Osage people are unhappy with it, then I am unhappy with it because uh, I think that it's more important what the Osage care about in this film. Somebody also said that this film was for all the races <laughs> to like see the error of their ways. I don't think he did that. If you were gonna do that, then Ernest would have had a change of heart at some point, you know? And there is a scene where he drinks the poison. Would you really poison someone you love? It felt very disjointed to me. The good things he did, as always, mwah, beautiful, beautiful shots. He employed lots of Osage people, so he helped the community during a very rough time. This was filmed in 2021 with severe COVID restrictions and they were all in mess all the time and everything. So he helped the community by employing them. I think it's good that there was more focus on the relationship. That's what I heard is that this was more of a focus on the relationship. And that was a wonderful choice, okay? Beautiful choice, but you, So you were moving in the right direction, but I feel like you didn't move far enough I feel very removed from a lot of this like the murder of Anna by the river um, Long, sh you know, wide shot impersonal, okay uh, and they just shoot her in the head and she drops on the ground and they walk away and that is it's very jarring it just seemed a little too simple, you know, a little too clean. One of my favorite scenes is when Tantu Cardinals, when uh, her character died from natural causes. <laughs> I don't know. When her ancestors appeared and she walked away with them. I found that to be a very happy moment. Um, despite that, it was a funeral, but it was a happy moment where it was like she was going home, you know? She did a wonderful job acting that. I felt Molly's pain uh, when she's getting poisoned by her husband and she's like all paranoid and, you know, I, I just, I kind of, that's it. it. That is one of the moments that actually highlights what I'm saying, that you know, if we didn't see that Ernest was the one that was poisoning her, it would be that much more shocking. Like anybody that hadn't read David Grant's book, like how shocking to discover that Leonardo DiCaprio, the sexiest of the six, he's like poisoning you and wants you to die so he can steal your money. That would be shocking to the audience. But instead, we watch him poison her and it just kind of dilutes the her realization that the person she loves, that she thought cared about her, truly cared about her, uh, was a traitor, you know? Because the twist of that, the, the turn from this man loves me to this man's trying to kill me, that is a compelling story. Yeah, and so the good things were the cinematography, the wardrobe, 
the the actors. I love how they had like a Native American FBI agent. He just like he just magically appears. It's like oh, what was that guy doing? Like that guy has suddenly appeared here. Who is he? And it's like oh, he's one of the FBI agents. <laughs> that was fun. I was like, why is he hanging out with the FBI? Oh, because he is the FBI. <laughs> Jesse Plemons, he did a good job. Uh, he was very stern with Ernest Burkhardt when he knocked on his door. There are many more films coming, so I'm really not sure. Like, you know, you kind of have to compare all the uh, films that are coming down the pipeline uh, for the Oscars. I do think that Lily Gladstone has earned herself an Oscar for this. For sure. Oh, I forgot about this part. Okay. So another one of my favorite scenes was when uh, Robert De Niro <laughs> takes Leo into a room and he speaks him. <laughs> I do not understand where that came from, but I'm living for it. <laughs> like, okay, all right. <laughs> You want a little spinky spank? Okay. <laughs> You're in trouble. I'm going to spank you. <laughs> what was that about? Why didn't you just slap him across the face? I don't get it. <laughs> Apparently when you're racist white men, <laughs> if you do something wrong, you get spanked. <laughs> Maybe that's why um, <laughs> they're all so cranky. <laughs> As you know, I have a very special rating system for the films that I review. If your film makes me unhappy, if I feel like it was a waste of my time, you get the eating. Okay? If your film was meh, okay, but it wasn't mwah, phenomenal, you get the cute little fluffy pink sheep. If your film made my panties wet, but not from pee because it was such a long movie, you get champagne. Okay, but champagne is very hard to get. I am not an easy reviewer, okay? I give Taylor Swift cute little fluffy pink sheep and she is champagne, so I am not easy. <sighs> but why would I go easy on you? Maybe if my theater career had gotten off of the ground, I would be busy doing that instead of ripping your movies apart. <laughs> ah, petit Trianon, I miss you, my dear. In my humble opinion, I think that Killers of the Flower Moon is a cute little fluffy pink sheep. You need to watch it. It's for tired watching, okay? But it did not blow my panties off. Try harder. So, that is all I have for you today. I'll see you next time. If you like what you're seeing, if you like what you're hearing, hit the like button and subscribe. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Get out now. We don't need you anymore. Thank you. Bye. Go watch some movies. There was some racism going on in Oklahoma, right? Has that cleared up?